suprascapular nerve, anatomy, pain, and block. Start as usual with anatomy. So, just to familiarize ourselves with a few bones here for the shoulder, they are very important. This is the humerus bone, as you know. This is the acromion. Um, this is the cracoid uh, process. This is the glenoid here, and this is the scapula, and of course the clavicle. So that's an anterior view. Looking from the back, uh, you still see the clavicle, you still see the humerus, the scapula, the, the glenoid. Here we can see the uh, scapular spine, and of course the um, acromion. Um, when you look at the scapula, again, this is uh, anterior, this is posterior view. So this is the medial border. This is the scapular spine, right? Acromion, again. Again, we're looking from the back, so you see the acromion. Looking from the front, you will see the coracoid process. And the superior angle of the spine, you see uh, the scapular notch. Um, it's important also to familiarize yourself with the supraspinous fossa. So supraspinous above the spine and infraspinous fossa and of course the uh, suprascapular notch right here. So looking from lateral view, you still see the acromion, you still see the uh, coracoid process, and of course the clavicle, and the glenoid, and the scapula. Looking from above, this is a superior view. So this is uh, looking from the back, so this is the posterior, right? So you see the scapula here, and from, uh, anterior you see the clavicle, and here you see the acromion, and here underneath, you just feel it from the front, the coracoid uh, process. So when we, there are here a um, few important also ligaments uh, to keep in mind. The superior transverse ligament is the most important because as you remember, when you add a ligament to a notch, that will create uh, a foramen. So you see the suprascapular notch, and you see the uh, spinoglenoid notch, and you see uh, this is the acromioclavicular ligament here. So the muscles of the rotator cuff, uh, very important and relevant. So there are four muscles, right? The supraspinatus, which as the name suggests, above the spine of the uh, uh, scapula, so supraspinatus. Again, we are looking from the back here. The infraspinatus, this one here. And just below that, you see the teres minor. And if you look from the front, you see the subscapularis. subscapularis. And this is a lateral view just to put things together. So, um, what's the suprascapular nerve? It's a mixed nerve. It has a motor and sensory fibers. It originates from the superior trunk, very important, of the precal plexus, mainly C5 and C6, as you see in the image, and occasionally receives some contribution from C4. So, why this is very important? Because this is one of the major nerves that supply the shoulder. So you see, this is the suprascapular nerve. It comes from the superior trunk. And the suprascapular nerve cover uh, a wide spectrum of the posterior superior uh, shoulder, of mainly the glenohumeral capsule. Uh, it gets some innervation also to the subacromial bursa, coracoacromial, and ac acromioclavicular um, ligaments. As you remember from my other lecture, that 
second uh, major nerve is the axillary nerve, which is from the posterior cord, and it's mainly responsible for the posterior inferior glenohumeral capsule, anterior inferior glenohumeral capsule, and lateral aspect of the capsule. So here we see the nerve entering the uh, fossa or the notch, the suprascapular notch. It's important to know it's running with the suprascapular artery. However, the important uh, landmark here, the superior transverse scapular ligament. So as you notice, the, the nerve goes underneath the ligament while the artery above the ligament. This is important when you are considering doing nerve block or mainly putting a peripheral nerve simulator. Then you see the course of the nerve going uh, down. So here, notice how the nerve came from the superior trunk. It take the turn lateral and posterior and it enter the suprascapular notch, then it pass in the supraspinous fossa to the sp uh, spinoglenoid notch. So you see in the spinoglenoid notch, it takes the turn and continue in the infraspinous fossa. So here, the, uh, the nerve, the suprascapular nerve pass underneath the homohyoid. So here, if you notice, these are the sternocleidomastoid, uh, and behind them the anterior scalene, the middle scalene, and here the inferior belly of the omohyoid and the trapezius. So the nerve pass underneath the omohyoid, the inferior belly, in the posterior triangle of the neck. Then it passes posteriorly toward the scapula together with the omohyoid muscle toward the suprascapular notch. Here, um, I'll show you more uh, relevant anatomy. So I remove that trapezius and then make a little rotation here. So this is the inferior belly of the omohyoid. I also remove it. So notice, and this is the supraspinatus. Supraspinatus, uh, I also remove it. So here, this is the serratus anterior. This is the anterior scalene, middle scalene, posterior scalene. Right? And you see how the nerve uh, running. Um, as the nerve passes deep to the superior transverse scapular ligament through the scapular foramen into the supraspinous fossa, at the notch, the nerve is, is next to the artery, as I showed you, but the vessel passes above the ligament. So this is the suprascapular notch. This is the spinoglenoid notch again. This is looking from above. So after traveling through the supraspinous fossa, the nerve reached the spinoglenoid notch. I'm just repeating so you really master the anatomy piece. Between the two notches, uh, it's in the direct contact with the bone of the supraspinatus or supraspinous fossa, covered by the inferior fascia of the supraspinatus muscle and I combined with the artery. And again, this is how it's coming um, um, from the front. So this is anterior, right? Anterior superior and going inside the notch, then uh, traveling down and it go in the glenoid, uh, spino, spino glen, uh, glenoid notch. Um, and this is how it uh, travel um, obliquely in the infra infraspinatus uh, uh, fossa. So, uh, I hope you master the anatomy now. So, let's learn about how this nerve pain present in neuralgia. And as usual, we'll go over a few causes. So, what can cause injury for this nerve? Of course, trauma. And carrying a heavy object over shoulder. So, there was a nice uh, study that I was reading um, in a news uh, uh, newsreel uh, cameraman uh, 
they found that it, they can develop some entrapment for this nerve that can cause neuralgia and shoulder pain because they were carrying the heavy mobile camera. Of course, that's uh, the study was a few years ago. So hope nowadays we have more lighter camera. So it's not a major thing here, but you get the idea. Also the meat uh, bakers, when they carry the meat in their shoulder. Um, intensive sports, particularly uh, volleyball and weightlifting, uh, they are also uh, valid and uh, it, it involves some maneuvers that can strain uh, the muscle. And of course, the most common uh, indi uh, indication we use it for in our chronic pain management field is the chronic shoulder pain. And in the perioperative setting, we use it for shoulder surgery if we are trying to spare um, brachial plexus that can, uh, for whatever reason, contraindicated or you don't want to um, block the phrenic nerve. So this nerve um, has a motor and sensory uh, function. It mainly supplies two muscles, the supraspinatus muscle and the infraspinatus. So it contribute to the shoulder abduction, sorry, to the arm abduction or shoulder abduction and external rotation. However, um, it will not be, um, if you lose the function of these muscles, there will be weakness, but not complete lose of abduction because of the other muscles, as we know. Sensory, it innervates both the acromioclavicular and glenohumeral joint. And as I showed you, part of the uh, subacromial bursa um and uh, we usually manifest by uh, posterior superior shoulder pain um i had a patient with a uh, preclial plexopathy with uh, posterior superior shoulder pain get lucky was not really a major uh, plexopathy so i just did the uh, suprascapular nerve and that did the trick for him and it's also important to keep in mind that the glenohumeral joint also receives sensory innervation from the axillary nerve and the lateral pectoral nerve and the nerve to subscapularis, as I showed you in previous slides. So how we block this nerve? Generally speaking, there, there are two approaches. There is a posterior approach where you uh, uh, inject uh, the nerve in the suprascapular notch or in the suprascapular fossa. And there is the anterior approach where you inject the nerve uh, as it's coming off the superior trunk and traveling to the posterior neck uh, under the posterior belly of or inferior belly of omohyoid. So let's start with the posterior approach because it's more common, easier. Uh, most of us. Uh, know how to use this straightforward. So first you position the ultrasound probe anterior to the scapular spine, and it's fair to feel the bone in your hand and palpate before you put your ultrasound. Then you need to tell the ultrasound probe cephalocodal. Um, so it will aim uh, this way, right? And it's really anterior, so you can catch the supra scapular notch. So that's the suprascapular notch, and you're going to see skin, subcutaneous tissue, trapezius muscle, and the supraspinatus, of course. And this is the bone of the floor of the supraspinatus fossa, and then you see the notch. Uh, this is another picture, so notice the orientation, notice how the uh, ultrasound tilted, so you can come in plane or out of plane. You can come out of plane straight to the fossa or uh, in plane, uh, mostly medial to lateral. Just notice the artery and remember the ligament, so you need to pop through that ligament. The anterior approach is more um, technically challenges, and I will show you and I will give you some solution here. So what I want to remind you here that the nerve, again, coming between the anterior and middle scalene, it travels underneath the posterior or inferior belly of the omohyoid. And I remove the trapezius here. So here, um, remember the other uh, nerves. 
So you see this little nerve here. This is the lateral thoracic. The difference, if you chase it back, it's coming between the posterior and middle scale. This is the dorsoscapular nerve. And what's important is the brachial plexus. And also next there, you have the uh, subclavian artery. Uh, I didn't show you here. So, and of course, you get um, the, 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 the phrenic nerve somewhere here anterior. Uh, um, maybe this one here. Uh, so, um, the, it's important when you inject to keep that in, in, in mind. So, when you inject, you really want to go as lateral and posterior as possible so you don't have intravascular injury. You didn't uh, uh, block the brachial plexus. You didn't block the, the phrenic nerve, etc. So there are a couple of described approach for the anterior approach. The first one is to um, uh, first position the patient. Again, this is for the block. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, peripheral nerve stimulator in a minute. So the patient in a sitting position with the shoulder in neutral position and hand rested in the ipsilateral thigh. The ultrasound transducer is applied to the side of the neck at the level of the cricoid cartilage, which is about C6, in the, um, in the transverse oblique plane to obtain the best view of the brachial plexus. And then the probe move lateral to visualize the uh, uh, trapezius muscle in transverse section and you visualize also the inferior belly of the omohyoid in longitudinal section and the upper part of the sartorius anterior muscle under the omohyoid. And then you can see the suprascapular nerve in the facial layer between the omohyoid and sartorius. So, uh, so sorry, serratus anterior, omohyoid, this is a brachial plexus, and you see the nerve between the omohyoid and serratus anterior. So that's lateral, right? Because here is the artery. Um, and, and you can come uh, from posterior to anterior. However, as I showed you in the previous illustration, now you are literally pointing toward part of, uh, part of the brachial plexus. So you can get the brachial plexus, right? Because you're coming from here to here and you can also um, get the phrenic nerve there are some cadaver studies showed that the phrenic nerve can be blocked if you inject in this uh, uh, in, the, in this approach so another way to scan another way to scan is to place your ultrasound above the patient clavicle and begin visualizing the supraclavicular brachial plexus, then trace it up um, until the, again, cricoid cartilage about C6, and that's where you see the interscalene brachial plexus between the anterior and middle scalene muscle, right? And then you scan coda directly, observing for a branch of the C5 that move lateral under the belly of the omohyoid that will be the suprascapular nerve. So follow the suprascapular nerve down toward the level of the supraclavicular brachial plexus, where it will be one to two centimeter lateral to the rest of the brachial plexus. And you can use some color Doppler just to make sure there is no uh, vascular supply here, then insert your needle. So that's the brachial plexus, that's the omohyoid, and that's the suprascapular nerve. And then you can inject few uh, millimeter. So remember, keep in mind, any large volume here, remember that's the nerve, any large volume, and that's the omohyoid, brachial plexus. So any large volume uh, um, here, what will do? It will give you phrenic nerve, and it will give you brachial plexus either one or both. Okay, so how can we solve this uh, dilemma? So I was reading uh, and I looked at these two approaches and I said, um, 
this can be challenges. So I kept looking and uh, the challenges, as I showed you here, all innervation close by, uh, vessels. So I found this study. So this is a study, interestingly, not in, a, um, not in the pain field, not in the surgical field. But basically, it was a few years ago, uh, about 10 years ago. And they studied the um, normal uh, supraclavicular nerve relation with the omohyoid muscle. So what they did, they start scanning here. See my uh, transducer here. So at this level, you see the omohyoid, right? The omohyoid. And then you see the anterior scalene, anterior scalene, and the middle scalene. And of course, the preacal plexus under that. And in between them, you see the suprascapular nerve. So that's the omohyoid. This is a suprascapular nerve, and this is preacal plexus. Of course, now you are uh, you are medial. You are close to the cricoid uh, cartilage, right? So start scanning outside. Just bring your ultrasound outside. So at this level here, outside, well, I didn't see much preacal plexus. I still see the omohyoid, right? Omohyoid, omohyoid, omohyoid. And underneath the omohyoid, you see the suprascapular nerve. And of course, you see the trapezius here, which I removed from this image here. And then keep scanning more lateral. So you see where I am now. So I am literally part of my transducer above the clavicle. So you see the clavicle here. You see the clavicle here. And you still see part of the omohyoid. And there is trapezius here, right? There is trapezius, that's trapezius, so that's omohyoid, omohyoid, all this, and the nerve underneath there. So I think it's this is a, a much easier way to scan, more reasonable. And remember, you always can stimulate the nerve and watch for contraction of the supra and infra spinatus, right? So, and then you can find the nerve and you turn longitudinal, so that's your omohyoid, and underneath that, this is the nerve. Okay, if you are not a big ultrasound fan, you can do it with fluoro. So fluoro, uh, position the patient in prone position, as you see here, the arm to the side, and then you can tilt the C arm about 15 degree, uh, about 15 degree and um, uh, about also 15 degree uh, oblique toward the head. So 15 degree ipsilater uh, ipsilateral and 15 degree toward the head, plus minus. You're gonna keep adjusting, but that's a good start until you see the suprascapular notch. The, the suprascapular notch is seen superior to the scapular spine. So here, that's the, the spine, right? That's the notch. So that's the suprascapular notch. It is lateral to the ribs, as you see here, lateral to the ribs, and medial to the coracoid process. So that's the coracoid process here process here and sometimes the suprascapular notch is not identified so you, you you may want to ask the patient to keep the arm up or if if the if you cannot get it with further uh, CR adjustment uh, but most of the time you can get it now um, if you place your needle and you stimulate, you don't have classic paresthesia. So what you can do, you can advance the needle farther through the suprascapular notch until it's about half inch, until you place it, so you, you are going through the coracoclavicular ligament, until you place it about the coracoid process here. 
but make sure you check lateral so you advance it in in, in lateral view um so you don't go to the lung right and then you can cross pneumothorax um there are a few handful actually of case reports for spinal cord stim uh, no, sorry peripheral nerve simulator placed uh, under fluoro and again there are um generally speaking a couple of approach so you can come uh from here so that's the scapula you can come from here aiming to walk off the uh, supraspinatus uh, fossa or a supraspinous fossa until you get closer to the notch here and you place the lead so that's again one approach the suprascapular notch around here so um, this is a suprascapular notch so you place the leads and of course you're going to stimulate pull push until you get uh, the best stimulation the other approach is to come from below right like walking off the infra uh, spinous fossa and targeting the sphenoglenoid notch so that's the sphenoglenoid notch and you can place your um, stimulator uh, lead and of course you can stimulate finally if you want to do radio frequency ablation remember this view is similar to the c arm adjustment i showed you a couple of slides ago so remember you get you have to come very close to the capsule so you catch only the sensory branches and not burning motor branches and of course you're gonna stimulate that's all what i have for you thank you